Battlefield 2042. And this is very surprising. We're actually running at 60 plus FPS in game. Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I have an awesome budget build for you guys. I built this PC, which should crush almost any game at 1080p, 60 plus FPS, for $300. In today's video, I'm going to go over how I built this PC and exactly how well it performs given its price point. So, let's just get right into the parts that make up this insane budget build. So, starting off with our CPU. Today we're going with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, a 6 core, 12 thread, first gen Ryzen gaming CPU. I was able to pick this up on my local used market for 70 bucks flat which is a great start for our budget build. I'm going to be pairing that with a B350M bazooka motherboard from MSI that I got for just $30. And on top of that, we're gonna be adding eight gigabytes of DDR4 in a dual channel kit that was picked up for just $20. Now for our graphics card, I'm actually gonna be going with an RX 574 gig. This is an OEM model of the card as you can tell by the red PCB and blower fan, and I was able to pick this up for just $100. This is the key to our budget build. This thing will provide some amazing graphics performance, especially at 1080p resolution in our games. Now to power this rig, we're going with a 450 watt, 80 plus bronze EVGA 450BR. This is a pretty decent 450 watt PSU from EVGA, and for this, I only paid $20. For our storage, we're going with a 256 gigabyte Micron NVMe SSD. I picked this up for just 30 bucks, which is pretty all right for a really decent NVMe SSD. I'm also going to be pairing that with two 750 gigabyte Toshiba laptop hard drives. I'm going with these hard drives because laptop drives are usually made pretty robust and to, and can be a great deal for the budget gamer. In fact, I actually got these for free from a recycled laptop. I picked this up open box at Micro Center for just 30 US dollars, and it should be a decent enough micro ATX case that can support all of our hardware. It comes stock with two fans, which will be oriented as an intake and an exhaust, so we have pretty decent airflow. Now, with all those parts, we add up to a total price of exactly $300. So if this thing performs any decent at all, it'll be a pretty killer deal. All right, with all of our parts laid out here in front of us, let's just put this thing together. And with that, I think our build is completely done. Let's Battlefield 2042. And this is very surprising. We're actually running at 60 plus FPS in game. Do do do, show some of the gameplay, yada yada, blowing shit up. Even while flying a helicopter. Ah, I blew myself up. Yeah, guys, for 300 bucks, this is more than playable. At 1080p, low settings, admittedly, we are running at a locked 60 FPS in most of the games and most of the maps that we play, only dropping to about 50, mid-50s average in some maps, in some scenarios. But with a little bit of tuning, this could easily get above 60 FPS at low settings in Battlefield. And again, for 300 bucks, that's pretty freaking insane if you ask me now admittedly it runs good enough that i've just been actively choosing to play battlefield on this thing today even though i have it on my main rig just because 
Well, quite frankly, it's very playable, and I'm having a great time. Now, Battlefield is one thing, but let's see how this $300 PC performs in a less demanding eSports title. So here we've got Rainbow Six Siege at high settings, and although our GPU is still at 100% usage, we see our CPU is getting into the mid-60s. Oh, Andrex back. Why, what are you doing? Titles. I died. <laughs> I'm not a competitive eSporter. In Rainbow Six Siege, at high settings, we still see our GPU at 100% utilization, which is actually pretty great. Shows that we're using our system to its fullest potential, and we're getting above 100 FPS. And on a high refresh rate monitor like this one, that is pretty awesome. For 300 bucks as an entry PC into esports gaming, you really can't go wrong here. Now, if anyone was concerned about that blower style cooler on our GPU, I'll have you know that although it's running at 100% utilization, it's staying at a nice and cool 58 degrees Celsius in game. Now, I want to move on to a different kind of example. This is Hitman 2 at medium settings. Although, there is one small problem. This PC has been slightly modified to run this game. Unfortunately, with the specs, 8 gigabytes of RAM just simply isn't enough for Hitman 2. I was getting consistent full game freezes for seconds at a time because of over RAM utilization and simply put, I was just running out of system memory consistently. So I've upgraded to 16 gigs, still dual channel, 2x8 for our Ryzen CPU, and it's a lot better. We're still running 100% utilization on our RX 574 gig, but the game is running at about 60 FPS at medium settings, which for this game is very impressive. The game is still very responsive, although this game and unfortunately even Battlefield 2042, as mentioned before, I would 100% recommend getting 16 gigabytes of RAM, which may put you over slightly, which may put you slightly over our $300 budget for the PC, but it would allow a lot more games to run way smoother and would be an overall better computer. Unfortunately, these days in Windows 10, 8 gigs of RAM just doesn't really seem to be enough. And I'd just like to finish off our benchmarks with some Grand Theft Auto 5. And GTA 5, high and very high settings. This game is running amazingly, over 80 FPS, and the game looks great even on this 1080p monitor. The game is extremely responsive, and although I understand that GTA 5 can run on almost anything, it still is nice to see when a computer can run the game completely maxed out, especially for a budget of, again, I feel like I should mention this, $300. Now in GTA, our graphics card is not entirely our bottleneck this time. As we do see some frame dips, even when the graphics card is not maxed out. GTA is, a, is not a very multi-threaded game, it's very old. So we're not going to be able to utilize the full 6 core potential of our Ryzen 5 1600. Although, boosting to above 3600 megahertz, even with this stock cooler, is still pretty great and way more than playable, at least in my opinion. So, with that, let me know what you guys think of this amazing $300 budget build that I've been working on for a little bit here. All the prices for these parts are the exact price, if not slightly more than I paid for the parts, and while it may take a little bit of effort, I believe it is entirely possible for you to build something like this too. Great graphics cards to look out for nowadays would be the GTX 980, the GTX 1060, the RX 570, and R9 290 and 390X graphics cards. They can be found on the local used markets around 100 bucks each, and they perform great in games and would make a great basis for your budget builds. Older Ryzen CPUs and Intel chips will perform pretty great as well, and, and RAM is still pretty inexpensive for DDR4 as well as storage. Motherboards can be found for basically nothing nowadays, so this is entirely a very possible and very awesome PC build. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>